She's a junior doctor and health campaigner. Anybody who's been expected to speak, please come to the front now. Also, any health workers, any health workers, we're going to give you a minute or two. We've got quite a few already, but anyone who wants to speak, we'll give you a minute or two, so please come to the front as well. Any health workers. So I'm going to pass you on to Ken Loach, who's going to greet us and tell us his words about NHS prioritisation and this election. Thank you, Ken. Yay! Okay. Uh, well, um, first of all, is there a doctor in the house? Because if I fall on this log, <laughs> I might need one. Um, yeah. Uh, congratulations on this um, on this great demonstration, on everyone turning out and recognizing the seriousness of recognizing the seriousness of what the NHS faces. I was talking to a consultant pediatrician uh, two days ago and he said that there was a he had a patient who was a, a small child with a mental health problem. He couldn't find one bed in England, the child had to go to Scotland to get a hospital bed, and he broke down. And that's the extent, just in that one story, you see the extent of the, of the possible catastrophe that faces the National Health Service. There are many people here I know working in hospitals and working in the service who know this only too well. And it's up to the rest of us to fight their battle for them. I think there are two huge problems. One is underfunding, and a lie to that is privatization. The underfunding, I understand that there is, the, the, as a percentage of our GDP, of our great, uh, nas total national income, it is 12% less now uh, than it has ever been since it, was, uh, since it began. I mean, a huge, a huge failure. Um, to fund the National Health Service. And you all know about the closures of hospital facilities, the closure, the fewer beds, yes. and the great yeah. uh, loss of facilities. Um, two, if I can find the piece of paper, there was, uh, two, I, I dotted down two statistics um, of many, many statistics that prove this. Um, in, in mental health, since, t since the Tories came in, in 2010, there are now 6,000 fewer mental health nurses. And that, that's the, the, the Liberal spokesman, the coalition, saying how important mental health was. And yeah. I think if there's one thing that shows that people talk about an alliance of progressives, I'm afraid the Liberal Democrats cannot be part of that alliance when since they allowed yeah. it to happen. Not only are there 6,000 fewer mental health nurses, there are 170 fewer doctors trained in psychiatry and psychotherapy. That's a huge loss. And of course it means that people are suffering, the young people are suffering, um, and uh, this, this government is to blame. The other statistic that uh, struck me is that since 2011, again that's the period of the coalition and this government, there are, there are now 12% of GP posts are vacant. So there's a huge crisis in general practice. Um, and there again, uh, that's six times an increase in posts that have been lost, that are, that are vacant, since 2011. So that you can see that the, the catastrophe has been absolutely, um, has been driven is much greater in these last five or six years. But of course we know the whole business of, under, of, of, of privatization didn't begin with the coalition. It actually began with Thatcher, and I'm afraid it was carried on under Tony Blair's leadership. Not to mention, not to mention the prudent Chancellor, Gordon Brown, and his PFI disaster. Because they think of the millions that have been drained from the National Health Service budget through the private finance initiative buildings where we're paying many times the cost of the buildings. Not only the buildings, but the services that are bound to them. And that has been a catastrophe. 
So I think, I think the, the underfunding has to end and the privatisation has to end. But what is absolutely special now is that we have a leadership that will begin to do that. And that's what makes this election special. Jeremy Corbyn has committed to ending the uh, subcontracting and the outsourcing and has said that everyone employed working for the National Health Service should be employed directly by the National yes. Health Service. Yeah. It's absolutely right. It's, it's back to the founding principles of an hour in Bevan that it is it is it is the, the best example of socialism that we can imagine. Um, now what worries me slightly, and I have to be honest with you about this, what worries me slightly is the manifesto isn't quite as clear as Jeremy is himself. And we wonder of what is going on between the different factions that ended up with that manifesto. Now it's good, it says that it will reverse privatisation and that's good, but that's if we want to end it. We want to end it. And I think it's very important, and I think everyone here will know it's very important, that we repeal the Health and Social Care Act, because that's the act that opens it up to private tendering. But of course the outsourcing was already going on before that act, that made it worse, but it was going on. And again, we want to see all the outsourcing ended, all the outsourcing, all the private contractors ended. Because if you think about it, they talk about efficiency, but if you think about it, for every contract, somebody has to draw it up. You have to have a legal team. You've got to have a medical team to draw it up. You've then got to have the tendering process. Each company has got its lawyers, its PR people, its managers. They've all got to be paid. They all submit the tenders. Then someone's got to check the tenders. And that again is health service um, staff and health service time and health service money. And then someone's got to see the contract is carried out. So you have this huge infrastructure of people who are not doing any constructive work in looking after patients, in managing patients, this huge infrastructure draining money from the NHS. So we want to that has to go. It's massively inefficient, and we know, we know that, um, that, that their aim is to drive us to the American system. So that whole infrastructure of privatization needs to go because it's such a massive drain. But one of the most devious things that this government has done, and it's done many, but Jeremy Hunt, and I've got his name right, <laughs> Jeremy Hunt <laughs> has allowed the private companies to use the NHS logo so that you think you're getting a National Health Service uh, provision, actually behind them is Richard Branson or one of the others. And that's what's so devious. And you have to ask, why should Richard Branson get another Caribbean island out of our National Health Service? He's got two already. So I think it's, these are the two things, we want proper funding, and that's committed by the Labour Party, and we want to end privatisation, and then they, will, they are committed to taking steps in that direction. Well, it's a start, but let's remember, whatever the results on, on June the 9th, 8th, 9th, whatever the results, the battle will continue, the battle will continue to keep Jeremy and John McDonald's leading the Labour Party, because that's the only way we'll save the NHS. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! So, so it can be done, and the, the huge surge in Labour support in the last two years, we have to hang on to that. We have to keep people involved. For many years, people like me, and I'm sure there's others in this crowd, 
talked about a mass party of the working class. And we turned around, and there it is in the Labour Party now. So keep it there. Work for June the 8th. See you there.